All right, welcome to another episode of Menu Heroes Digest. I'm your host, Steven. And I'm Jordan, the co-host. And I am hitting myself in the head because I could have ended last week's episode with chaos control, and I didn't. And you didn't. I screwed up. Like everything. Wow. Yeah. All right, so we got quite a few stories today. Oh, um, yeah. Especially quite a few movie stories. So yeah. let's just jump right in. Oh, yes, yes. We got a lot to cover today. So, uh... First off on the agenda, apparently it looks like Nintendo's Game Boy emulator for Switch Online leaked on Monday of this week. So, you know, there were rumors that they were going to bring Game Boy games to the subscription service um, as part of the expansion pack. There seems to be some evidence of that, according to Trash Bandicoot <laughs> on Twitter. Uh, files have been leaked onto 4chan, which is obviously the most reliable news source there is. Yeah. Uh, with a GBA emulator developed by Nintendo called Sloop. And a Game Boy emulator called Hiyoko. Uh, let's see. It's developed by Nintendo of Europe's Nerd team, which Nerd. stands for Nintendo <laughs> European Research and Development, um, which has been in charge of the emulators in the classic consoles and the N64 GameCube and Wii emulation in Super Mario 3D All-Stars. Um, let's see. There was video of the uh, emulator supposedly running on the console, but the account that posted it was deleted so who knows if this is actually happening not that i ever want to give 4chan any credit at all but <laughs> the thing is is that plenty of people leak all kinds of things on that website and there are cases where it's been proven true yeah i'm, I'm trying to remember one that uh, did happen and it's not being a bit i swear there was a thing where some information was leaked on 4chan and it ended up being true. But I just... I mean, there's been a couple instances, but, you know, it's 4chan. I, it, I, I'm thinking maybe it was, like, the Facebook thing of, like, several employees were, like, showcasing, oh, there's things that are actually wrong with our site that are actually doing harm to people's psyche and their mental health, and uh, if some of those whistleblowers went to 4chan first or not. I can't remember if that was the thing that was... Our, our, uh, that, that, that's where I first noticed there's some things like, oh well, something from 4chan leaked then it actually was confirmed or true. Um, gotta be honest, I don't know. I know that they've done some crazy stuff in the past. Uh, like, there was that time when uh, Shia LaBeouf was doing that whole resistance thing or whatever, and they tracked him down by triangulating uh, flight. That appeared in one of the videos with constellations, and it was and they found his exact location and took down the flag he put up again. It was crazy. Uh, this was real. By yeah, the way. yeah. I, I I imagine it was because anything Shia LaBeouf that is weirder out there, I can I can believe. I don't like Shia LaBeouf. I'm not answering your phone calls, Andrew. <laughs> We're literally in the same house. Why are yeah, you calling me? I. I, anyway, yeah, I don't like Shia LaBeouf. I think he's annoying. Yeah, I'd rather just talk about the GameCube stuff, or Game Boy stuff. Sorry, Game Boy. Um, because hey, I love me some Mar uh, Pokemon Pinball. Pokemon, hey, that that is one of those. I used to have that. Yeah, and um, <sighs> we knew this was gonna happen, guys. Anyway, let's move on. Well, one of the games that nope. is a Game Boy game that I really liked was uh, Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories. I remember that. That was one of that was one of the first GBA games I had. That and Spy Kids. Uh, I think it was Spy Kids Two actually. It's weird, but uh, yes. I do remember that. Speaking of uh, Kingdom Hearts, uh -huh. you might have heard of a little thing called Coachella, uh -huh. and uh, Hikaru Utada performed a couple Kingdom Hearts songs. At Coachella. Well, not just any song. Well, the they, song. Yes, of course. Uh, Simple and Clean was was sung. The thing every twelve-year-old sang when 
they were alone, and they just needed a vent out. And it's, I wouldn't it's, like. I have no idea who they are, though. It's really funny because uh, the Twitter account that posted it originally, the video has been flagged as copyright by the performers. Not shocking, because um, <laughs> like Let's Place had been a thing forever, but like when. Let's Play started becoming popular, and people were doing Let's Plays of Kingdom Hearts. The videos that would have the Simple and Clean song playing, those are the first ones to be struck or taken down, or there was some kind of like copyright claims, because they're partially owned by Disney. Well, it's like Square Enix and Disney yeah. both own that song, and they want to make sure that only they can get any revenue from that song. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, Simple and Clean... What are some of the other the way songs? That you're making oh my feel tonight. It's hard to let it go. Let's see. I let it go. See. There was also let it go. Let it go. Can't hold back anymore, Steve. Anyway, there was a first love automatic in T. Yeah. They also played the song "Face My Fears" from Kingdom Hearts Three. I really like that song. Without Skrillex, of course. Uh, well, well, I think you can do a version of Skrillex. I have no problem with Skrillex, Well, they but, obviously uh, did do a version yeah, of that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But I got no beat with Skrillex, but obviously, like, I think I can imagine them getting creative with that song. Well, you know, and it's it's really cool because, you know, video game music at Coachella, Coachella is considered one of the top music festivals. Um, and one of the most legit, you know, after Firefest. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Um, but now, some other things that happened at Coachella, you know, you know Harry Styles, eh, uh, Danny Elfman was there. My boy. People, yeah. people like, actually saw him. And I don't remember what he looks like, so let's take a look. Uh, uh, he's super skinny. He's That's Danny Elfman? That guy's gotten ripped. This is Danny Elfman? I have always seen him as either with short hair and super skinny. I've always imagined him as like this emo looking dude, but that's because I always because he's usually him in with, like the with, Tim uh, Burton uh, yeah. movie, the Tim Burton movies, yeah. But uh, er, like every interview I've seen of him, he has like big glasses. He's skinny. He has short hair, you know. And it's like to see him just oh, he's not. It's not like bodybuilder but he's he's got some he's got some muscles he's, he's packing and yeah and he's got his hair is a little longer and it's like he needs those whoa. muscles to play the glockenspiel wow dude well that's the that's the little like that's the little xylophone one oh yeah that's yeah. metal i have i actually have had one in the closet i don't know where mama put it um so let's talk about some transphobia do we have to? Well, uh, no, this is good. This is good. This is good transphobia. And that it was removed. Steven 2022. That's the, that's the only good form of transphobia. None transphobia. Yeah. So, uh, GTA 5, which, you know, instantly, uh oh, mm -hmm. uh, has been re released for the PS5 and Xbox Series XS. Wow, what a surprise. So, um, it's a game that's never going to die, Stephen. It yep, will it's be like released. Skyrim. So, uh, some it's of the true. Yes, some of the content that is considered uh, transphobic is in one of the game in-game offices. There were action figures on display that included one that featured interchangeable genitalia. It was dressed in stereotypical drag and uh, had a noticeable bulge to keep it somewhat family friendly Ooh, really? mm -hmm. um, and there was also NPCs that were labeled as drag queens and uh, tagged as transvestites within the game's yeah. files on PC uh, they were also uh, stereotypically dressed up as like you know in drag um, but it wasn't portrayed in a positive light. You know, no. drag can be super cool. Well, I, I said, if it was just purely drag queens, I think there's a way of, like, showing, hey, you know, it's kind of inclusive in a way. I mean, maybe not the best way, but at least, but throwing in 
the other word, the yeah. that the is clearly meant to be derogatory. The, Im- the important distinction is garish makeup is the term they use. Um, so, you know, these, these were both jokes made at the expense of the trans community. Yeah. And while it is a fair, you know, point that GTA is offensive, that's the whole nature of mm-hmm. Grand Theft Auto, uh, there are ways to go about being offensive like that without causing harm. Like, you know, I mean, you know, it's GTA. Some people are just really impressionable. And well, also, the, the game has always had a history of, like, you could do whatever you want to to sex workers, yeah. including killing them. I mean, you know, it's it's GTA. We're not expecting it to be, like, a saint. But no, it is cool to see that they're taking some steps to adjust the game. Yes. I, before you move on, I have I have to say, like the as we're looking at that article, oh, yeah. there were ads for, for Fantastic for, Beasts three for the Wizarding World. There was like ads for both the Harry Potter Blu-ray collection or whatever, and also oh, Fantastic like Beasts collection. Talk so about your targeted ads. Yeah, I mean, hey, <laughs> you know. Ooh, we don't like J.K. Rowling on this channel. Xander, yeah. Xander likes Harry Potter still. I, I grew up with Harry Potter. I can't bring myself to consume the content, though. And Z- but since Xander's such a young kid, you know, I can't just be like, hey, no, you can't watch Harry Potter. You can't play ha- Lego Harry Potter. You know, I don't buy him those things. Um, if he wants to read the books, there's libraries. Uh, Goodwill sells secondhand books. Um, if he wants to get Legos or I should stop playing with trash. Or uh, Lego Harry Potter, the game, for instance, he can do it with money that he gets for Christmas or like gift cards that he gets. Like uh, for Easter, he got a ten dollar eShop card, so he got Lego Harry Potter on the Switch because it was for sale. It was the entire collection. Um, so you know, I'll let him consume it. He understands why J.K. Rowling is not a good person. That's, that's, that's good. Or it's good that he understands. But, you know, since he's such a young kid, you know, and he doesn't see the negative stereotypes in Harry Potter, like, you know, how the goblins are supposed to, are basically a representation of Jewish people. Yeah. That's not something he connects in his brain. He doesn't see the goblins and he's like, oh, hey, Jews. Mm-hmm. That's just not something that happens with him. You know, let him. I'll let him explore it some, but I don't like encourage it. I guess I don't. I'm not. I don't push for him to explore it. If he wants to partake in that, I'll I, let him to an extent. I would again. But I'm also not his parent. You can't <laughs> force anybody to do what they can or can't do. But you could at least like suggest some other fantasy stuff that is yeah. less trans, or that is, or the creator isn't outwardly transphobic. Yeah. And I do want to say one more thing, because we will move on, I swear we will. But just the fact that, like, I remember, like, some old, like, uh, like you know, some, like, you know, within my, like, sci-fi fantasy group, um, you know, people would explain to me, you know, that, look, the Ender's Game book, even though the creator is extremely homophobic, oh, Orson, Star- Orson Scott Card has funded so much money to anti-LGBTQ plus groups and to add to bills and there's that promise to, you know, prevent same-sex marriage for decades. And he had, like, I've had so many people who, like, who love sci-fi and sci-fi fantasy books tell me how great Ender's Game is, how it's a book about you should be open up to other people and you should be tolerant of other people and everything. And I imagine, like, they were going through the similar things that many Harry Potter fans like myself were going through when they had to find out that Oops, the guy who, the person who wrote these stories that taught you to be more accepting and more loving of other people is, is not, very close minded. Is not more accepting and loving of other people. Exactly. Now, I do want to add, I know you said we'd move on, but. 
So a lot of people, a lot of people, will, yeah, we won't. <laughs> a lot of people will use the argument. Well, you got to learn how to separate the artist from the art, and that's true to an extent. Like, uh, let's take for example Michael Jackson. Uh, he was a not exactly great person. Uh, you know, touched kitties and stuff. Um, or at least he's accused of it. You know, I haven't delved into it because I just. I remember the trials and everything. I, I do all that vaguely that remember that. Circus. I also vaguely remember when they announced his death because I was at I was in Florida at my grandma's house. <laughs> anyway, um, you know, I like some of the Jackson songs. They're catchy, and you know, I can listen to them because he's not getting money because he's dead. Mm -hmm. Um, and I don't feel as problematic. But like, right now, if I buy Harry Potter stuff. It's actively supporting someone who's still alive, who's still spreading hate, and they're using their money to spread that hate. I had someone tell me the other day that because I was calling her transphobic, that I was trying to play the victim card. And when I explained to them that I'm a cishet male, uh, so I can't be playing the victim card, they're like, oh, okay, so you're just bullying her because she's a woman. And I was like, what? Twitter is a crazy place, my dude. That was my first mistake, did, signing up for Twitter. Did they not realize that she herself is bullying and, like, yeah. going after trans people? Isn't, it, isn't she the original bully? And well, I don't know if there's a rule of, what you know, how much you can bully a bully or, like... Anyway. Or, I know. Let's yes, move on. Please. Let's get to Sega Actually, again. I don't like this story, so we'll skip it. No. Um. So Sega is developing new, big-budget... Jet Set Radio and Crazy Taxi Games. These games were terrible. I hated them. They were awful. No, I'm just kidding. I haven't, I haven't I was, played them. I've heard I, good things. He loves them. I will, I will vouch for Crazy Taxi. That one I spent so many quarters on. The sequel was really good. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, the thing is... <laughs> the, th the thing is... See, I'm thinking about like that spiritual successor. No, the no, no, taxi I'm thinking about the exact... Yeah, well, that, again, it's like, Crazy Taxi, the first game was really good. Unfortunately, every time they try to recreate it, it doesn't quite work out. So, you know, I want to be hopeful of, like, Sega bringing these franchises back. Mm -hmm. I think they have a lot of potential. There's a lot of stuff that Sega has that I think could come back and could be great. But, it's just a matter, I have looked into the history of Sega... And they have made so many fumbles over the years, yeah. over the decades. And I'll actually mention briefly some of some fumbles that happened recently after we talk about this. Oh, goody. So, uh, we learned recently that Sega's big secret super game project is actually a series of AAA games. And that includes big budget reboots of Jet Set Radio and Crazy Taxi. So, Crazy Taxi has reportedly been in development for a year. Oh, and it's released is still a few mildly. years away. Um, well, you know, the development of this particular one. Yeah, yeah. And there are supposedly two further unnamed games, one of them a first-person shooter, under the Super Game umbrella being worked on as well. Uh, this is brought to us by the Bloomberg, that states that Sega is looking at the Fortnite business model for both titles. Oh, that's great. Uh... Super Game Project is a place the company may experiment with NFTs. Oh, great. I didn't read this article before we reported on it. That's yeah. great. Uh, both new games are in early stages of creation and could still be cancelled. Jet Set NFT. How does that make you feel? You know, it... Well, on the one hand... Thankfully, the the interest in NFT. Well, that, granted, most people have been against NFTs from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. But just even the people that were sort of trying to get into it at first, thankfully they've declined immensely because many stocks in, in various NFT funding and spending has gone down exponentially. Oh, you know, over the years, it, it's just been a year over the year, just in, in less than a few months. <laughs> So, yeah, it's like, it feels like it's been going on for years because we keep talking about something NFT-related. 
but it's like clearly like e- even people who are super into crypto don't care about NFTs. But unfortunately, the big companies that really believe this was going to be the future are still trying to pump this thing out, not see you know are, are realizing too late mm-hmm. that this is not going to be the future of spending and of and uh, you know of merchandising as they all thought it was going to be. And so they're kind of stuck with this crap. Pardon my French, but you know, just <laughs> I, yeah. I'm always concerned like how much what kind of cuss words we I, can, I can't pronounce. Crap is not a cuss word. So, uh, fun story. I don't remember if I told you or the channel this. Uh, remember when I made that NFT uh, parody of Simon Belmont as a board ape for at the thumbnail? I posted that on my Twitter, and I was like, um, "Hey, shout out to that time I made a joke." Uh, Simon Belmont for Board Ape because NFTs suck, and it got l- like two likes from NFT bros, and it was like hilarious because they obviously didn't read that I said NFTs suck and are worthless. It's just anybody who's into this is just in <laughs> denial. It was so just, funny. Or the pro- like, okay, I, either they are in de- absolute denial, or they are just bots. They're probably bots and or have I, I something. Don't, that automatically boosts anything that says NFT. <laughs> hey, at least you got two likes. So, let's talk about something good from Sega. Yes. Sonic Origins. I'm excited for this because, you know, it's a remastered collection of Sonic 1, 2, 3, and Knuckles, and Sonic CD. Yes. Uh, it is coming out in... There's been a few ways to play like the first three games. June twenty like, third. But like, it's been difficult to buy Sonic CD. Yeah, and like, for instance, there's mobile ports of one and two, and they're really good. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, but Sonic three and Sonic and Knuckles never got released as a mobile port, even though there was proof of concept for it by Headcanon. Um, they just never got around to it. But it's finally getting released re-released and headcanon is behind it there, right. if you'll remember they're the studio behind uh, Sonic Mania yes. and uh, you know excited for that I haven't seen some images online of like the just the, some of the animation mm-hmm. are they, is there full on animation scenes or just are they just doing uh, just only just footage or only just like images so far so uh, that that is what I'm unsure of but we gotta talk about the DLC situation. There are some things that are locked behind uh, pre-orders and uh, premium fun packs, uh, such as mirror mode and uh, letterbox backgrounds are locked behind pre-orders, or you know, letterbox background. Yeah, or standard DLC. Actually, mirror mode is only available pre-order. Maybe maybe it's only unlocked immediately through pre-order and it's available to be unlocked when you play the game and beat it. Or maybe it's just pre-order. Um, yeah, and then we've got letterbox background, pre-order or premium fun pack. There's character animation in the main menu and animations during music islands, premium fun pack, uh, camera controls over the main menu islands, premium fun pack, hard missions, premium fun pack, and then there's additional music tracks from Mega Drive Genesis titles under the classic music pack. So uh, this DLC scheme doesn't make sense if I'm being 100% honest to speak of. I mean, I I know the sense is they this this is some like EA. Yeah. model right here oh you want a you want a background for your letter box too bad you gotta pay us like 4.99 or pre-order i mean it's just it's dumb and that's the fumble at, I was at, this, at this point you might as well just get I'd, I'd be happy if you gave me like a golden horse that'd be remember when that was the thing the internet was mad about when like 
it was like I think it was was it a Skyrim or was it Oblivion where like there's just a DLC of like you could get this the arm the golden armor for this horse. I think it was ESO Elder Scrolls Online. Okay, so the one everyone likes to be mad about. And look a reason. I mean, it, it was the beginning of this whole fiasco. Yes, where we at right now? And I, mm-hmm. wow, we did not, we do not know how good we had it back then. Mm-hmm. All right, uh, so let's talk about, let's jump into the movie world with Netflix. Yes. So, you guys know what Netflix is. We we don't need to go into detail. And you know our sponsor, ExpressVPN, to which you can have access no, to... No, <laughs> stop. Um, sorry. So sorry. earlier this week, Netflix lost, or said that it lost during the first three months of this year, 200,000 subscribers. And they are expecting to lose a further 2 million subscribers. That's fun. Um, their stock dropped by 35%, which is a lot. The yeah. biggest drop in nearly 20 years. All that stuff I would like to have, or at least like a taste of that. What? Even if we're, I mean, the, just the chance of like having so many subscribers and having millions of dollars. It, yeah. It'd be nice to have a little bit of that piece of the pie there. We have 33 subscribers. Heck yeah. So, hey, you're leaving Netflix, so come <laughs> over to us. So. We got all this. They plan to make 50 games available before the end of the year. Uh, they are very, very, like, focused on trying to do this. Um, there uh, is, ex- uh, there's, like, an Exploding Kittens-based game. Um, which I played that game. I wasn't really impressed. I didn't think it was as fun as it sounds. That sounds like a Newgrounds game. <laughs> well, it's a card game. Okay. Um, so, let's see. They, they did one one example of having games on their service was the story mode of, for Minecraft. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah. I thought that was a show. Is that, is, is that an actual game or I thought it was a show? It's a Tell Tales game. Oh, okay. Um, and there's not really more details on like what games they plan on doing. Um... You know, the article talks about how they've done some video game adaptations like The Witcher, uh, Cuphead, League of Legends, Castlevania. Um, so, yeah. Fun. Um, but, movies that are games, game adaptations, those are pretty... There's been some good... Again, on Netflix, there is, you know, like, Arcane, League of Legends... Dota is also really good. Castlevania. Oh, yeah. I haven't I, watched it. How did I not mention game. that? How did, I'm the big Castlevania guy. How did I mention Castlevania? The very first thing I thought of. But Cuphead. Yeah, that, that also was really good, too. Um, the Dragon Quest movie? Not <laughs> so much. Sander watched the English dubbed one. That was awful. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. So, Minecraft, though, is a movie? Could be interesting. Um, it is. If okay, so I will be one hundred percent honest. If like, if Mojang was like, "Hey, you know Game Theory, their Minecraft series, yeah, they're pretty much on the money, and they use that as a basis for a movie." That would be really cool because you know, the the hidden lore of Minecraft that Game Theory comes up with is actually really compelling, and it's always fun to watch. I, I, know, I need to watch that. Um. But they're talking about making a Minecraft movie. Yay! It's been in development since at least 2018 because Jill Mezik is receiving a posthumous credit for working on the film. Um, so, I mean, okay. Jason I, Momoa. Jason Momoa? Is. <laughs> supposedly, he's in talks to join the live action Minecraft movie. Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention, it's yeah. live action. Yeah, because I was about to say, like, hey, there was a Lego movie. There was actually a couple Lego movies, not just not just direct to DVD, but also in theatrical that I thought were really good. I thought, you yeah, know, hey, Warner Brothers, they could 
potentially do a good animated Minecraft movie in, in, as a big budget theatrical thing. Minecraft animated actually does have potential for great movies. Like, yeah. Story mode was pretty good. Yeah, okay. I, I, I need to watch that too. Okay, uh, yeah. stuff I, I need to watch. But Jesus. when you say live action, I. I gotta I, be honest, I am when you sent me this article, I had to make sure it wasn't published on April 1st. Yeah, it was. <laughs> This would have been an onion article ten what? years ago. Oh yeah. It's... Wow. What? Yes. Yeah. Just... Jason Momoa is supposedly gonna star in Minecraft, the live action movie. I. I mean, is he? Is okay. Is he gonna? Okay. Well, they haven't said anything yet. I feel like he'd be Steve. That's one of the things. But thing. that also feels slightly racist because they both have. I was gonna say they have beards. They both have beards. That's why I thought. Anyone like, can hey. have beards. Well, except for me. I can well, only have I was about beard. to say, like, if you're gonna get a guy who's no, a, a, a video game character who's known for having a great beard, you get a you get an actor who has a great beard as well. It, you know, it makes sense. Uh, but it's just like I'm just wrapping around like <laughs> Jason Momoa as a Steve from Minecraft. <laughs> It's like the funniest thing I can think of. I really hope the microphone's picking up my voice, cause like I'm. Really I'm trying. I'm trying to. You're trying yeah. to project. I'm trying to be a thespian now. I'm trying um, to dress nice for this tweet. I just have my Daffy Duck shirt. Nice. It's not anything for anything. We don't have any, anything we need to. Oh, actually, Warner Brothers. Yeah, be, there we Warner go. Warner Brothers are stories. So hey, there you go. And uh, basically, Daffy's reaction is kind of my reaction. I'm like, what is this? Uh, well, again, I'm the guy who tries to be uh, like optimistic and everything. and well, Mainly because, like, as I said before, hearing about a Sonic the Hedgehog movie, live Bash Sonic the Hedgehog movie, I was like, what? No, this sounds awful. This sounds like a terrible idea. And when we saw that first trailer, I thought, this looks terrible. <laughs> this is gonna add even more shame to the Sonic game. How dare they? And, you know, they, they did make some changes last minute, yeah. and thankfully the movie turned out pretty well. The sequel. The sequel was great. Yes. People still say that it was actually just a conspiracy and that Paramount purposely chose a bad one, so we go in after they change the design with a better perception. But I don't believe that for a second because I... they had merchandise based off the original design mm -hmm. already in production, mm -hmm. and they had to redo that. Yes. And uh, there was bonus content that we saw with the original design. I was going to say, there was, uh, there is out there an actual, you know, real life model of that original yeah. Sonic design. That's like, it was, they actually, you know, it's it's as a statue form, but it basically was, this was going to, how it was going to look like in, in, in animation, how they're going to animate and move him. But it's just, it's like a statue of that creepy looking hedgehog design. So no, that was gonna be like no. That was gonna be the legit design until people as, back as backlash. As much as people want to deny or want to believe that there was a big conspiracy, I am telling you, no one go like even some hardcore pranksters out there would not go that far for a prank no. or for you know for a lie. I might have. They, not not that Paramount. Not <laughs> Paramount. Okay, you gotta think how executives think. You gotta money, think how money, money. Yeah, and they really thought a super detailed hedgehog is what kids wanted. As you can see, we did not. We are totally fine of just taking the designs from the games and bring them in live action. We're okay with that. We'll be fine. We can Roger Rabbit the thing. So, talking about Sonic, which happens to be owned by Sega. Another Sega story. Another Sega story. Yes. So, uh... Yes. As this article, like, the first sentence of it's beautiful. 2022 <laughs> continues to offer up headlight, headlines that seem like they were created by a rogue AI learning how to play Mad Libs. So. I mean, you're not wrong, but also, this is one of, this is, this is one of my favorite Sega franchises. This is the one I'm, I mean, well, there was a research, there was a return a few years ago. There was a sequel to this game. And it was really good. You mean a new sequel? Yes, there was a new... Because there were three. Yes, there were three. Then a fourth one came out a few years ago. It turned out very well. So, again, anything to keep this franchise going and to get 
more focus on it, I am down for it. I'm talking, of course, about Streets of Rage. So, uh, a name you guys may or may not be familiar with is Derek Colstead. Who that? Well, he is the writer of John Wick. And supposedly Sega is partnering with him to uh, create a movie adaptation of Streets of Rage. Which I could see working. Yeah. With, especially with him at the helm. Uh, I could see Streets of Rage. You know, any fighting game I can honestly see as a movie, except for Smash Brothers. Super Smash Brothers just doesn't seem like it. Well, I... I feel okay. To be fair, a lot of other fighting games do have, you know, stories. They have, they have the very, they have a very similar story, which is the story of Enter the Dragon, which is like this person, this antagonist invites people to a tournament. You see a bunch of interesting characters with their own unique fighting styles fighting it out, and usually you have one character who is the, the main character who is with a personal vendetta against the main villain, and you see them going after it. That's that is the plot of a lot of fighting game franchises. <laughs> and that becomes the plot of some of their movie adaptations, except for Street Fighter. You know? That one they decide to be a G.I. Joe movie. I'll be right back. You keep talking about this. Yes, yes. So, so let me just say that uh, I'd be even more excited with this news if the whole team, the whole crew from the John Wick films were to be a part of this. Um, fun fact, uh, the director of the John Wick movies played Terry Bogart in the live-action King of Fighters movie. Really? Yes. I didn't even know there was a live-action King of Fighters movie. You were better off not knowing. Um, I'm not going to watch it, so it doesn't matter. Well, <laughs> I unfortunately did because I, I'm a fool and I, I have way too much optimism in this world, but yeah, it was not good. Uh, and... Uh, yeah, unfortunately, the guy. Okay, I'm gonna look up his name. Because you know what? That'd be something fun we could do for the, we should we should, should do either for this channel or for like more a more mature Minion Heroes channel. Uh, riff tracks. I would absolutely. Super Mario Brothers movie. That. Oh yeah, David Leach is the guy, and um, he uh. Yeah, he also did. He did Deadpool two and Atomic Blonde, and he did uh, Hobbs and Shaw. Yeah, he directed the first two John Wick movies. Uh, so, and uh, yeah, the again, it's just weird that in, uh, you can see on his IMDb page, he yeah, he was Terry Bogart in the Terry Bogart movie. In the Terry Bogart movie. In the King of Fighters movie, sorry. <laughs> I would, you know, they, they should have done a Fatal Fury movie first, because that's that's the kind of beginning of King of Fighters. It's like the Bogart brothers, Terry and Andy, gotta get revenge on Geese Howard for killing their father. You know? That's how the whole th thing begins. It gets crazier and weirder after that, you know, but it's like, you know, to me it feels like you've got to tell a story about the Bogart brothers. The Bogart brothers. Which... No, I mean, you know, it it takes two. Yeah, it does take two. Yeah. Speaking of it takes God, that Spe was such a bad Speaking segue. of Hobbs and Shaw. So, Dwayne Johnson. Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Oh yes. yes. He will executive produce the It Takes Two movie for Amazon. Um this is another movie by DJ2 Entertainment. DJ2 Entertainment is like Sonic. They're working on this Streets of Rage movie. And now it takes two. Yeah. Seven bucks productions <laughs> is like... A that's that's not a bad name for a for, for co company, I feel. What um, we got? We got seven bucks. So yeah, uh, we've got the Sonic movie writers... Pat Casey and Josh Miller on board as executive producers, uh, as well as jo Josef Ferris and Oscar uh, Lantis of Haze Light Studios, the studio behind It Takes Two, the game. Um, it is possible that Johnson will star in the movie. Whoa. If he does, then that means the movie's going to take place in the jungle. 
Well, it kind of does. Are well, you serious? I've never played the game. Okay, so... I won't play it with Xander because it seems a little too dark. Well, yeah. well... And also, it does not feel like a good time to play games that talk about divorce. Yeah, not a good time for you guys. <laughs> but I will say, like, It Takes Two was one of the, one of the best games of last year. Have you played it? I've seen a lot of Let's Plays. We should play it. Yeah, yeah, I'd love for us to play the game. I think, it, you know, again, it does tackle divorce. It is a, a story about two parents about to get divorced. I mean, hey, you know, I was playing Chibi Robo, and, like, a big part of that plot is divorce. Yeah. The mom is tired of her husband spending money they don't have, um, being a lazy bum, not going out and getting a job. Um... um She's also kind of mean to them, though. She's mean to her daughter. Um, she thinks her daughter's weird because her daughter wears a frog hat, won't take it off, and she speaks like ribbit, ribbit, which it, it turns out that's an actual language yeah. she's speaking, ribbities. Um, and there's aliens, so like, man, Skip made some great games. <laughs> I wish more of them got localized. There's this one I want to play called uh, Gift Pi, Gift Pie or something. Anyway, sorry, didn't mean well, to get on it. Let me try and summarize. It takes two for those who are unfamiliar. So yes, basically the plot is, you know, two parents about to get a divorce. The little girl is very sad about that. She one day has a cry. She has like two dolls that are meant to resemble her parents, well, in in a way. And um, one day, hearing about the seeing her parents argue and fight, she ends up crying tears over the little dolls and then when she leaves them alone it turns out the, the essence or souls of her parents are in the dolls and they're trying desperately to figure out how to go back to their bodies and figure out like how to undo what this just happened and while they don't live near a jungle their house <laughs> oh their house is near a forest so there is a lot of like them going up to the trees them having to you know like work with like, the the, the the squirrel army and everything there's like a whole thing of like because like the dad was a gardener and everything but like he hasn't been doing well he's been getting lazy he hasn't been taking care of the garden for a while so a lot of plants a lot of like weeds have been taking over the garden and they gotta like undo that and like, there's a lot of crazy twists and a lot of like interesting levels of designs and everything and uh well nothing anything super violent there is uh, it's rated t for a reason yeah, so there's some I, disturbing stuff. I, mean, I remember the elephant one. Okay, I was about to say I, I was saw that be, scene and that was, was rough. Try to be careful what I could or could not spoil, but you know, yeah, that all is I the say roughest, is elephant scene. Look it up at your That is the roughest, most painful scene, and yet the it's like they don't full they don't bring that back up later. <laughs> you know, you would think that'd be the thing of like, oh wow, what is wrong with us? Maybe we need serious counsel before we consider you know, taking care of our child and everything because it's like they do that to that poor elephant and you're thinking like, <laughs> like no this, parents? The, you know, <laughs> this poor girl needs a, needs a new parent she doesn't just her, the girl's problem isn't that she her parents are getting divorced her whole problem is her parents and she needs to go she into a foster therapy. care system or something uh, I I didn't again that was a big spoiler for it takes two and uh, I don't think they'll put that in this movie if they're gonna have Dwayne Johnson be one of the dad be the I, dad. I wouldn't say no because you know he's, he's he really, done he, he he can do dark roles. Yeah, he, and like he, yes. uh, he was a heel wrestler in in WWE. He he was a bad guy. He's he's been a bad guy in his earlier roles. And I could see, but. Well, first of I all, just see this being a successful series or a movie. I guess it's a movie. Yeah, I, I think there's a you could make a really good movie out of this. You know, it could be very emotional. It, it's just like, I, I guess it's just like Dwayne Johnson ha is obviously extremely built. The guy is, you know, not. It, well, but it's like the dad. You know, both like has he in his original body? He's just a regular dude. Yeah. And then when you see the doll version, it's kind of like he's a little plus size, you know. And well, I mean, yeah. other than the, like the one scene of Central Intelligence that showed Dwayne Johnson's character as a 
is a team where they, he was in a in a fat suit. Like I don't I don't think they would have Dwayne Johnson be anything other than a brick house well, I mean, you for know, two hours. It's just a uh, a rumor, and you know, yeah, that's the sentence. <laughs> yeah, um, so you're saying that like, he could just be a producer? Like, yeah, I mean, right now he is definitely an executive producer. What if he's the voice of the the book, Doctor Hakeem? I mean, he could be. You know, that's that's an idea. It, it, he, his voice is very fit for Gary. Yeah. It is. It's not as fit as like say Morgan Freeman, for example. No, but I look. I love Moana. It's a really good. And I thought he his character was fun in that movie. I like the singing. That was that was fun. I I just okay. Did you like his singing? Did you like? Did you like the, the Dwayne Johnson singing? Yeah, I thought See, he did great with your uh, your welcome. I thought that was the weakest song, honestly. You're the weakest song. I maybe no, I am, French but it's over. the end. See, you but, guys never. Okay, <laughs> all right. <clears throat> then you hear that it's over. <laughs> Final episode. What a way to go out. <laughs> what can I say except you suck? I ruin everything. No, um, not, I mean, you know, I never watched the movie, I'll be honest. I've listened to two songs from it, so, three songs from it. Every yeah. song is incredible, okay, every song in Moana is incredible, but I feel like his is the weakest, is, is my, is my thought process. That's okay to have bad opinions. No, um, okay. no, I'm just no, kidding. It, it actually is fair to have different opinions, okay? We, we want to promote different viewpoints, we want to promote people who have, you know, be, you know, being common, but also having different viewpoints, different points of view. You know, that aren't harmful. Yes. Yeah, that's, we gotta put a disclaimer. So, uh, that's basically it for yeah. stories. Um, we got some planned for next week. Yeah, we had a lot of stories this week, and, um... I'm surprised we got through all of them in yeah. as short a time as we did. Yeah, um... As I said, I also want to include a update. Um, oh yeah. On the uh, the PlayStation gender discrimination lawsuit thing, unfortunately, it's been dropped for now. Uh, let me double check that uh, because, yeah, I mean that was one of the few things I covered solo on uh, during my vacation. That was during the PlayStation showcase, right? Yes, yes, and um, you know I. And granted, it, it felt weird that I did a whole thing that was like, here's all the stuff that came out of PlayStation State of Play. You, you did know? it as shorts, but they were all too long to be short, so I had Look, to edit I had, them together. I had, I had thoughts, I had opinions. I, I was lazy that week, okay? I'll be honest. Well, I was honest with you, saying like these are longer than a minute, so yeah. they're probably not going to work as shorts. And that's my problem. It's like anytime I try, I, I have a hard time condensing any of my thoughts into less into less than a minute. There's it's almost impossible. It's hard. You know, it's, that's it's why we needed to do this digest show so I could, at the very <laughs> least, have an hour to say my thoughts on these you know, these issues here and there. And um, that's why I just don't have you do shorts. Like if if I'm having you cover stuff by yourself, I like going forward. You know, just do like you did with the Batman stuff, which I have not continued working on. I apologize. Uh, you know. <sighs> There was supposed to be a worst Batman games video, and you know, again, I finished the script for the the worst Batman game. I was also working on the best Batman game list. That one I am still struggling with, but it's like it's just so funny that we tried to get this this video or stuff around the time the movie came out, and yet the movie's already out of theaters and it's in the movie's it's been on, a mess. yeah. Xander watched it the we, other night. We might as well say, hey, you know what? Maybe we should wait till the next movie comes the out. The next Batman. Wait until The Flash comes out, and then... Hey, guys! The, no, I would have confidence that our video will come out before The Flash at this point. <laughs> oh. Oh. But yeah, no. Um, there's, so, also, there's also a Batgirl movie. Maybe we'll get, get the video done. I... Give your update. Yes, yes. Before okay. Okay. okay, so... You know, the lawsuit that brought against Sony last year accusing PlayStation of pay disparity, wrongful termination, and other ins uh, instances of gender-based discrimination has been dismissed by the United States District Court of North Carolina. Ugh, the North yeah, Carolina. Yeah, yeah man, what's... I don't like the Carolinas. <laughs> uh, wait, no. North California. Oh, well, I miss... North California. Oh, 
Oh, California. man. California. Like California. California. Okay, I have I, mixed feelings on California because... How did I screw that one up? They both start with C-A. You, you saw North and you saw CA, so it makes sense. Your brain's like, hey, North Carolina. Yeah. But then it's like, oh, hey, North Car- North California. California. I I have mixed feelings about California because it wants to act like it's all liberal and, and woke, but it, it's just as bad as the other states. The, uh, the red parts of California make themselves well known. Orange County. <laughs> So yeah, basically, yes, um, again, try and give a short, I was trying to give a very short update on this, but yes, uh, uh, the court says that the, the former PlayStation employee, Emma Majo, failed in most cases to fully explain her allegations with the, fund, with the findings st- stating in one instance that the plaintiff merely recited the elements of the claim and did not allege any specific facts, and in another, her claim were not plausibly plead. So... Pled. Pled. Wow. I, I was like, that sentence doesn't make sense. I unfortunately, I know this is a this is a very important story, and I feel extremely bad for not. Hey, it's yes, fine. Yes, you know, is, we're also running out of time. At least so. you're not like you know. I just. At least it's not like that time where the county just someone walked in and like, hey, I can do ASL translations, and they couldn't. They were just throwing random hand gestures up. Yeah. At least you, you know, not that bad. Close though. Um, no, not but, even close, because you're not putting anyone in danger. Okay. Well, the thing is, I did want to give that update because we did a whole video about PlayStation, both things to look forward to, but also this big thing going on. And um, and it got dropped. Well, yes, this one did get dropped, but um, but there is, I think there's a there's like eight other women that have, that have oh. like tried doing their own thing so it's like it's it's still it's still going so let me see oh so it's not like a class action the games may yield new so yeah okay it says right here that um, you know uh, that uh, yes this is not the end of the story while dismissing most of the 13 complaints brought against the PlayStation in, the, in this instance the court acknowledges that three all of them con- 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 covered under state law have merit and that the added testimonies of eight women, as we reported, as they reported, as we were, as I was reporting, what they, they were reporting, mm-hmm. uh, mean the pl- the plaintiff's allegations are still in flux. So this is still an ongoing thing. This is just like this one woman's case was proven to be okay. So hers was not strong enough, so it was dropped. Yes, but there's still a case. The previous three still are under investigation, and okay. now eight more women have come up. Okay, is what I was I trying to get at. Is- or, you know, supporting evidence. Yes. Yes. I don't want to call them evidence. That feels objectifying. So. You're a piece of evidence. Sorry. This is serious, and I'm being a jerk. Um, typical Steven. Hey. Typical white man. We're the whitest kids we know, Steven. Whitest kids we know. No, no, I know, I know people way whiter than me. <laughs> that felt slightly racist. I'm sorry. Well, that's, for my there's, a, there's a whole show about that. I think it was on Showtime. The wise kids we know, the wise kids I know. Somebody's vacuuming. That's a sign we need to stop. Okay. <laughs> that's a Thank sign we suck. Thank you so much for enduring all this news, all yes. this stuff going on. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, uh, we always appreciate it when you watch. And yeah, we always appreciate we can do these things together. It, it is more fun to do it live. Uh, well, you know, in do person. Live. <laughs> in person. Because uh, we're able to you know, riff off each other better. There's not that awkward delay that we experience. Um, Can you hear me? Steven, are you there? Can you hear me? No, you're, you're, you're cutting out. Steven. Steven, can you hear me? You're, you're cutting out. So where are, where are no, we? Anyway, anyway. Until Everything's next going time, dark. Until next time, stay cool. I don't feel so good.